Christy, thank you. We often talk here about the opioid crisis. Tonight we're going to talk very specifically about heroin. And we'll talk about the people who use it and the risk to public health, including the dangerous spread of HIV and hepatitis. You're about to meet one man who has a mission to keep those addicts more healthy. It's about 6 p.m. on a Thursday in Greenville County. Substance abuse counselor Mark Burroughs is off work. So usually it's just a, a phone call or a text message. Or and on call. They're a little skeptical at first. They like don't necessarily um, trust me at first. On this night, he's meeting a heroin addict at a strip mall on Greenville's Good. north side. Yeah, I don't even know who I'm looking for. How are you? The addict, we've concealed her identity, spots Mark's white Hondas circling the parking lot. And Mark, who works to get addicts clean. We got cottons, cookers, Narcan, fentanyl test strips, three types of syringes. Will help this woman get a cleaner, or at least safer, high. Let me get some more on the fentanyl test, because I just okay. heard word on the street is there's a new batch in, in Greenville. I'll give you some of these too. Burroughs is by himself running South Carolina's only needle exchange program from the trunk of his car. Each Friday, he sets up a table with bottles of water and condoms. You need anything else? We got syringes, uh, a bunch of stuff, man. He targets neighborhoods where he knows people use needles for illegal drugs. People are using drugs, you know, without, with or without me, you know. Um, I don't think they need any help from me. I mean, the reality is they're going to use drugs whether I'm here or not. Before he was an addiction counselor, Burroughs was an addict, and by sharing needles, he infected himself with hepatitis C. He found it challenges incorporated as a way of keeping other addicts alive and relatively healthy until they're ready for treatment. Research at the Centers for Disease Control appears to support his methods. 50% of new Hep C cases are IV drug users. And in South Carolina, hepatitis C infection rates are up 48% from 2010 to 2015. By treating the spread of disease with clean needles, Burroughs may be saving taxpayer money. Treating an uninsured addict would cost tens of thousands of dollars. Clean needles cost 10 cents and by collecting the used, possibly infected needles. I mean, the other thing we're trying to do is keep law enforcement safe by needle sticks. You know, there's a high percentage of law enforcement that got stuck by a syringe in their career. We found them discarded in public areas. On this Friday, Burroughs set up behind a chain convenience store along a busy South Greenville Highway. Our photographer, Kevin, found this needle likely thrown out the window of a parked car. Burroughs got a tip that the woods back here are filled with homeless and local prostitutes. There's clear evidence of heroin use, including more needles lying in the grass. That one, the tip's broken off. And while here, his needle exchange hotline gets another call to a local hotel and a woman who may be looking to get clean. I know this one young girl who literally will go around to motels where she knows there are needle users and dig through the trash. It's life saving. I mean, you have people in this area, a couple who have been sharing the same needle for three weeks now. We got some Narcan. I'm going to put a couple business cards for other people. And then these are. This is like an opioid hotline. So far, it's a small operation, working on donated supplies and small gifts of cash. Got the um, pharmacist donations. I had a doctor donate. And then I had harm reduction coalitions from all over the country sending me Narcan. But I need more um, either syringes donated or money to buy syringes donated. Yeah. But Burroughs has big plans, trying to save this invisible population. But they're desperate for help, and they're, they're calling me. Yeah, man. Take it easy, dude. In the middle of an opioid uh, crisis for Burroughs and the people he serves, a clean needle may be the first step to getting clean. People are going to have strong opinions about what he's doing. As you heard in the story, Mark is looking for donations to buy more supplies. If that's something you would be interested in, I've included his email address in this story on WSPA.com. What an incredible look into the situation and into Mark's work. Why aren't there more Marks, Gordon? As, it's interesting that there aren't. It, you know, there, there is a stigma attached to it. 
um, already when we posted that this story was coming up, there's already this sort of feedback of, well, people make the choice to use IV drugs and they're, they're stuck with the consequences. So that stigma is really hard for people like Mark to work past. And so what he is trying to do is tell people, look, if you stop the spread of hepatitis and HIV in these users, you also cut down on the spread on people who are not using these drugs. And that's, that's a true. public health issue. Absolutely, Gordon, amazing report.